we do have one more and this is from miguel and mm. miguel asks when to graduate from steel to gold <sighs> nibs oh that's such a good question mm. such a good question um this might sound a little weird starting off with a question like this but i think it's important to say that you don't necessarily have to you know i think the maybe assumption with a question like this is that if you don't graduate that you're like not completing or something like that. I don't think that's the case. I, don't, I think it's years and years and years and years ago, there was a distinctly different, you know, level of quality and stuff like that between steel nib and gold nib pens. Gold was a lot cheaper decades ago in comparison to steel. The quality of steel and the steel alloys was a lot more hit or miss, wasn't quite as reliable. So you have a much higher quality steel nib with a much more expensive gold nib where perhaps the gap of performance and the gap of quality between steel and gold has shrunk while the price has ballooned between that's very well said thank you um that's something that we was in effect when we first got into this business over a decade ago it was already in effect and it's only gotten stronger so i think the assumption based on years and years and years and years and years of you know, assumptions that gold nibs are better, I think some of that is up for debate, you know, yeah. as to whether you have to graduate to gold nibs to have a successful fountain pen experience. I I mean, I do think there's a lot to appreciate with gold nibs, but I don't necessarily think that you have to go to gold nibs to have a fulfilling, enjoyable writing experience, even for the long term. You know, you can go your whole life using steel nibs and have an absolute blast and you know do it very affordably so um that said when you get into gold nibs you get into some other you know d aspects of the pen whether it's design or theming or limited edition type stuff you get into some cool materials and other things that will then pair with a more expensive pen so there will be aspects of going to a gold nib that you'll inherently you know have other options as you step into that price range but if you're talking specifically about the nibs, I don't think it necessarily has to be such that you are using gold nibs to get a great writing experience. Um, so my thing, if you've never used a gold nib ever at all, try to use one. Try to, if you have somebody you know or there's a local pen club or you're able to go to a pen show, just try to use one once. You know, Try and get a couple different pens, some iconic ones if you're, aware of them. I'm a big fan of the Pilot nibs because they have good flow and some springiness to them. So you'll get a really good representation of, you know, what gold nibs do and what makes them different going with a brand They're like also Pilot. pretty affordable compared to a lot of other gold nibs out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pilot's got a, like, a number of good entry level gold nib pens. So if you're yeah, able with like to the try the E95S, the, the Custom 74 mm -hmm. and the Vanishing Point are all, all yeah. three right there. Yeah. Sailor's nibs tend to be a little stiffer, though their bigger nibs are good. Even with like Pelican, like some of their gold nibs on the smaller pens are not as springy and distinctly different uh, as some of the steel nibs out there. Now, if you're getting into the M800 M1000, you start to see some more of the bounciness. And you get that with some of the sailor, like 21 karat nibs, the king of pens nibs, those get bigger, but that's, those are significant investments. Um, so I, that, I've always been a big fan of the Custom 74. That was one of my first gold nib pens. And that was the reason I love the Custom 74 and why I've talked about it so much in the past is because that was kind of the aha pen that clicked with me. And I was like, you know, I'd been using fountain pens for a year and a half or so before I started using that one regularly for myself. And up until that point, I don't know that I would have necessarily been able to feel or even articulate much of the difference between it. But I had at that point enough experience using steel nib pens where I was able to truly use and appreciate. And I was like, aha, uh -huh, okay, this is kind of what people are talking about. You know, sort of like if you're, I don't know if you're uh, like tasting wine or something like that. Like me, I don't taste a lot of wine. If I have a really expensive sip of wine, I'm not gonna say bottle because I never buy a bottle of wine, but if I have a really expensive sip of wine, I'm like, yes, this tastes better than the $5 bottle of wine that I normally would taste. But I, I can't tell you what makes it better or why. And I can't tell you why a $30 bottle is better than a $12 bottle. I just don't have the palate for that. So I think kind of using that similar kind of vibe in the fountain pen world. If you have a variety of steel nibs and you can 
identify you're in, you just the feel and what makes those nibs feel different in your steel nibs and you have your own preference and you can really get a sense for the shape of the ball of the nib. If you have used them enough to where you can really distinguish between the pens that you have right then, you're probably at a place where you could use a gold nib pen and actually be able to kind of feel some of the difference. I'm not going to say that everybody would appreciate a gold nib just right off the bat because it's something that it, it's sometimes more subtle. Uh, but if you're really invested and you have a lot of experience with it, you would you would appreciate and notice the fine differences just like you would, you know, a lot of other things like a nice set of golf clubs or a nice tennis racket or, you know, a car with a specific type of handling or something, the responsiveness or whatever. You know, if you don't use these things very much, you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell or appreciate the difference, but you would if you have a certain level of experience. So I think give yourself time, uh, you know, and get to know your pens really well. And if you can feel that difference with the pens you have, even the, some of the lower price pens, then you may be ready to, to appreciate those gold nib pens and it might be worth checking out. Or you could try getting like getting one second hand or something, you know, especially if it's a more affordable pen. If you don't have a lot of money to invest, you don't have to buy something brand new. You can maybe get something second hand off somebody or get a vintage pen. It might be a, a good foray to at least get to experience it before you like really feel like you need to go nuts on some gold nib pens. There you go. Yeah, and I and I, I love what you said there at the beginning, Brian, about mm. the actual graduation aspect mm. and kind of the myth that that is the progression that, you know, if you want to have a better pen, you need to go with a gold nib. And that's not always the case. Mm -hmm. It's it's very much preference based. I mean, I'm certain that there will be at least one person here in the YouTube comments. If you want to scroll down, somebody's gonna say, I prefer steel nibs. And that's mm -hmm. Totally common. That's totally fine. It is. It's a preference thing. So, mm -hmm. like Brian said, just identify what your preference is, and you'll be able to figure out whether or not that is going to be uh, for you or not. There you go. But definitely, don't feel like you need to make the jump in order to, you know, progress further into the hobby. You know, it's not. It's not a necessity by any means. Absolutely.